Welcome back. This video is all about sharpening your troubleshooting skills on AWS. We will discuss how to trace an HTTP request in your AWS infrastructure. So that's what I want to do with you today. So how do you debug a single request or maybe a number of requests, maybe requests with a special error code or request with a very long latency, stuff like that. How do you debug them? How can you find out the root cause of that problems? So uh, a typical web architecture on AWS uh, looks like this, as shown on this uh, diagram. So it all starts with some EC2 instances, maybe Fargate or what have you, but some compute where you run your web servers and uh, those are typically running behind the load balancer. And sometimes, often when I do, we also have CloudFront, a content delivery network in front of that. And then at the very beginning of an HTTP request, there's of course a user that has his browser open or a user that sends uh, HTTP requests to an API. So a lot of things can go wrong here. So there could be a problem between CloudFront and your load balancer because of some misconfiguration or hiccups in the AWS network or service interruptions. There could be, and that's probably the more um, typical use case, a problem between the load balancer and your web application running on a web server and easy to forget what have you. And the question, how can you find out where do things go wrong? Where do things go? Um, where do you need to, to investigate? And what we want to talk about today is how to trace a single HTTP request. And the good thing is um, a number of AWS servers, they add some kind of a tracing ID or of a request ID to each request that comes along. And so CloudFront, as I said, adds its own header for every request it forwards to a distribution. So for example, your load balancer, and you can use that to um, find this request later. So this is a header that gets added, it's um, Amazon CFID. And the load balance suggests the same Amazon Trace ID. Um, so also this gets forwarded to um, the target. So you see two instance, Fargate, um, whatever. Okay, so that's basically um, all you need to know. This is already happening out of the box. You don't have to uh, do anything about that. Um, what I want to show you is how to use that information for debugging. Uh, incoming HTTP requests. And that's what we will do next. So I want to show you how we will use these tracing IDs to debug HTTP requests. So again, this is, we have CloudFront, we have a load balancer, we have Fargate. And uh, typically all those elements, all those nodes send access logs. So the CloudFront distribution sends access log to S3 if you configure it to do so. Same is true for the application load balancer. You can also send access log to an S3 bucket. And in our example, in the demo, I will use Fargate to run Nginx and I will send access logs to CloudWatch logs because that's the, the easiest option here. And we have one problem a little bit. If we now want, what we want to do, I want to have the log message from the load balancer and from Fargate, from Nginx. I want basically to have one view and to get all the log messages uh, in one single place. And now we have the problem that some log messages are in F3, some are in CloudWatch logs. And I've chosen um, a new approach to search, to analyze the data. And this is, I'm using Athena. Athena is a service that you can use to query data that is uh, stored on S3. So that is where the service started. but um, recently, AWS added the possibility to integrate other data sources as well. And CloudWatch Logs is one of them. So this is not yet production ready. It's in beta. It's uh, very early days. But I think I want to show you that as well so that you can get a feeling of how that works as well. So that is what we will do. So in this demo, I will focus on the application load balancer and Fargate with Nginx only. I have... Um, I've not in scope the CloudFront access logs, but that's basically the same thing. So you can easily adopt it to, to what we are going through next. Okay, so okay. first of all, what, I, what did I do? I set up an application load balancer 
an ECS service that is running on Fargate. And this runs on simple Nginx container and the Nginx container logs to CloudWatch logs. That's basically what we have in place. So let's quickly go through that. So there's a load balancer, application load balancer. And the interesting part here is I have enabled um, the feature that is called access logs, which means the application load balancer will periodically upload its access logs to an S3 bucket that I've configured in here. So that is one part of the story. And the other part, let's quickly jump to the Elastic Container Service, ECS. So there is an ECS service running and um, the task, so basically the container, the Nginx container, is configured in a way to upload the data to CloudWatch Logs. So we have a CloudWatch Logs group that collects all the access log information from the Nginx container. That is what you can find here. So that's the two uh, sides of it. And um, it maybe interesting is the Nginx configuration. Um, so what I've done here is um, I've configured the log format a little bit. So you can have a custom log format with Nginx as you probably can do with other uh, web servers as well. And what I've done here is besides adding some yeah, very basic uh, information for each uh, access uh, request is, I don't know, the remote address, the status code, the, the body byte sense and so on. But what I have added here additionally is I'm also logging the uh, header, an HTTP header, the X Amazon trace ID header. And remember, this is the, the tracing ID header that the ALV adds to each request automatically. And I'm logging that with Nginx so that I can filter for those information later as well. So that is how I can connect the access logs from the load balancer with the access logs from Nginx later. So that's how this is uh, working. Okay. So, um, yeah, so those are our two data sources. Um, it's the application load balancer sending logs to a three and the Nginx logging to uh, CloudWatch logs. And um, now what can we do with that data? So that is uh, where Athena comes in. So Athena is a service that you can use to query data on the fly. So the interesting thing here is, um, so when you have a data warehouse, you pay for a very big and expensive infrastructure. And um, that is not the case with Athena because with Athena, you're storing the data on a more or less cheap storage like S3 and you then query the the data on demand and you pay for the data that Athena is processing to answer your request. So basically what Athena is doing in parallel, it loads all the objects from S3 that are needed and then answers your query with by doing so. And you pay for the data that is processed, which means when you don't do any queries, you're not paying anything and uh, only when you use it, you're paying for it. Okay, so that is, that is one aspect. Okay. It started with S3 and now uh, Amazon released a few adapters for other um, data sources for Athena as well and CloudWatch Logs is one of them and they do it by using a Lambda function. You can basically implement your own Lambda function as a data connector as well if you want to, I don't know, uh, query data from anywhere else on demand. Um, but for CloudWatch Logs, AWS provides what you can say it's kind of an example uh, the serverless app repository uh, contains the needed uh, function. I've already set that up. Uh, the function is called CloudWatch Logs. And that's exactly what um, the query that we are running uh, is also uh, using. So you can see uh, that in here as well. So let's go back to Athena. And in here you can see we are calling a Lambda function named CloudWatch Logs. And then the convention is that this is the uh, CloudWatch log group name. So this is the name of the log group that Nginx sends its access logs to. <clears throat> and then you can either select a, a log stream or there is that, um, that mechanism of all log streams where you basically go just through all the log streams in the CloudWatch log group automatically. Okay, so if we do that, let's run that quickly. So it's now running the query in the background. There are Lambda function it gets invoked and this requests the data from CloudWatch logs. And what we finally end up with is um, we get that information, um, the log messages in here in Athena. 
Okay, so that's that's part of the story, but that's not what really interests us. So we want to combine that. So I want to have both the logs from the ALB as well as the logs from um, the Nginx container running. Uh, as I said, the ALB sends access logs to S3. And if you quickly Google for uh, AWS ALB Athena, um, you can find a documentation um, from AWS where they have a query that creates an Athena table that you then can use to query your ALB access logs. So that's basically what we do here as well. So we have that table in place already. Let's quickly preview that. So now the data comes from S3. So that's the, the original thing that, it, uh, that Athena is all about. And you can see here are the logs coming in um, from the application load balancer. We have, for example, the processing time, the status code, uh, different kinds of information in here. And the, the most interesting thing here is, um, let's see where we can find this. Um, we have the, the trace ID. So this is the, the trace ID that the application load balancer added to the request. And this was also added as an HTTP header to Nginx. And Nginx is also logging that information. So now we can connect um, the two of them. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going back to my query, querying the data from CloudWatch logs. I'm <coughs> adding another um, table in here. So let's say we do ALV logs. So this is the table that you can see here that fetches the information from, from S3. Let's say as ALV logs without the underscore. And now um, we can do a where clause. And let's say um, now we want to find um, we want to match um, the, the CloudWatch logs to uh, log messages from application load balancer. How do we do that? Um, I do uh, CV logs dot messages or message. Um, so the thing is, uh, maybe go, maybe let's go back to that quickly because that's maybe a little bit um, harder to understand. So I'm I'm querying. Let me do another query. I query again the um the, C, the cloudwatch logs so the thing with cloudwatch logs is um by default the data that is coming in uh nginx logs a json message but this gets not um imported into cloudwatch log uh, into athena as a json message as well so that is why we need to treat the message the field message as a string here for for now so let's let's do um we say cv logs message message like and then we do the like operator uh, followed by uh, ALB logs. Uh, let's let's see uh, how is they called um, the tracing ID, the trace ID field. Okay, go back here, like ALB logs trace underscore ID. Doing that like with that operator in front and at the end may, means it searches for the trace ID somewhere in the string. So whenever it's somewhere in the string, this appears, it will filter for that. And now let's do, a, um, and um, for example, ALB logs, the logs dot ALB status code uh, is 400, 404, let's say. So I don't know, we want to debug for four or four arrows, for example. And now what we do is we get back <coughs> the the CloudWatch logs um, that the application load balancer responded with the status code 404 with. Okay, now it runs. It compares the logs, the ALB logs from S3 with the CloudWatch log messages. And what we get back is um, we get back um, the CloudWatch log message. So this is the access log from Nginx, but only for requests that the ALB logs, the ALB responded with a 404. So that could be interesting if you do debug um, a certain uh, problem. Or <clears throat> let's do an alternative. Um, the ALB logs also um, contains, let's say, um, the, the request processing time. Or maybe more interesting, the target processing time. So let's say uh, if the target uh, processing time 
is greater than uh, let me show let me quickly go into the data what kind of target processing time do we see here uh, very little <laughs> because the requests are very okay let's let's do a very simple uh, thing here so if the target processing time is is uh, greater than zero So my example is a simple nginx server that just uh, responds with the nginx default page so that is why we don't have any target response times but in a real application you have and what you can do here now is um, you can filter for log messages i don't know for example that have more than one second re uh, target processing time which means the load balancer delivered the request to your fargate or what have you and then um, the target took longer than one second, for example, to, 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 to answer the request. And this is how you can filter for that. And the, um, the result comes back here. So now we can really combine those two by using uh, the trace ID from the load balancer. And we could do so uh, in the same way. We could use the, the um, request ID that CloudFront adds to each request as well. Then we have the whole chain, for example. So I find that quite uh, useful. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, my demo. So what we learned today is you can use uh, tracing IDs, different kind of tracing IDs from CloudFront, ALB, and by the way, even other AWS services add such a tracing ID, for example, the API gateway. You can use those um, tracing IDs to really debug a, a request from the user to uh, the whole pipeline, the whole real processing pipeline in your infrastructure. And this is really helpful. If you have any questions about that, please post your questions to community.cloudonai.io. You will find a topic um, covering this video there already. You can just um, add your uh, questions there. Also, uh, this is the perfect place to discuss with me and also all other community members. Um, about that feature and about different ways to debug um, HTTP requests in your infrastructure. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear your feedback. So please send me a message over Twitter or via email or also use community.cloudonaudio to do so.